Well, there's certainly a lot to unpack there. To do that for us, I'm joined live via Skype by William Lee, Chief Economist at the Milken Institute. Always good to have you on. Thanks for having me on. So what do you see as the biggest contributing factors to that Q1 economic growth we've seen? Oh, the reopening of the economy is not, no question due to the vaccine distribution and success with getting people vaccinated and people feeling safe that they can resume their normal lives again. That's absolutely key to resuming normal life and also economic growth, not only in the United States, but also in the rest of the world. And I want to also look at the stimulus's impact on Q1 economic growth and what are the expectations for Q2 and beyond as perhaps the stimulus checks don't, don't keep rolling out? The, the word on Wall Street is that the second quarter will be peak growth. That's when the stimulus really starts to peak out. People start spending and they really want to get out and resume their normal lives. They've saved a lot of, uh, of money during the time that they've been locked up. And so, so Q2 uh, is going to be the time when we're going to see the maximum amount of growth in the United States. And after that, it's going to come back to the more normal growth trajectory. And in fact, the FOMC, the Federal Reserve, has forecast that by 2022, the end of 2022, we should come back to the 2.2, 2.5% growth that we had prior to the pandemic. So then how does that tie into the unemployment claims data that was also released today? What do those weekly numbers tell us about where the labor market recovery stands? That's a great question, Rochelle, because there's a slight disconnect between the amount of spending in the U.S. economy and the degree to which people are coming back to work. People have a lot of money to spend because of the unemployment benefits, because of the stimulus checks, and also because they're not going to want to go back to work because they feel it's still unsafe and they don't have the child care uh, to allow them to go back to work. So right now, the unions, uh, teachers' unions, have prevented schools from opening. There's a, 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 a lack of facilities that enable workers to resume their normal life. So you see the unemployment rates are still hanging out at a fairly high level, even though spending has come back and there's a lot of output. There's, a, of course, without people to make the output, you see a lot of bottlenecks. In many sectors, there are a lot of shortages. And in those sectors where there are shortages, you see a lot of price jumps and price inflation. So to that point then, how big of a concern are these higher prices that we're seeing? I think one thing that I think our viewers should be reassured about is that more than half of the jump in prices that we've been seeing have been due to bottlenecks. Shortages in chips have led to uh, used car prices going up by almost 30, 40 uh, percent. And what we've seen is also shortages uh, that resulted in higher lumber prices and housing prices have gone up. So a lot of these, these shortage-induced price jumps will be dissipating as soon as the supply chains come back online, as soon as the container cargo ships from China start to arrive in our ports and can be unloaded properly. So there's a lot of stuff that is holding back a lot of the supply from getting to the people who want them right now. And I think the Federal Reserve has told us that they expect a lot of these situations to be alleviated sometime by the end of this year and beginning of next year. So then you mentioned a couple of types of products and services. Where are consumers feeling that, in that price increase pinch the most? Oh, it's without a question. Uh, every day they see uh, gasoline prices go up, again, because everyone wants to go out driving, but the, the gasoline supplies are, are short because the container ships just aren't bringing them in. But without a question, they're in the food supply, and that's because a lot of the, 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 the meat packers and a lot of the, uh, the agricultural supply chain hasn't come back in line again. So, so I think the people are feeling it most in the areas where their pocketbooks are affected day to day. Uh, when they want to travel, you see airline tickets going up. They want to rent a car. Well, there's a shortage of cars to rent. So the, the things that people want to do immediately because they want to come out of, of hibernation in their homes, that's where they're feeling it. Because let's face it, everyone wants to do the same thing at the same time, and there just isn't enough to go around. That's where you see the highest prices. And of course, by definition, you'll see those prices start to come down again as soon as people start to calm down. So my advice to people would be, wait until next year to go on that vacation, right? Wait until next year to buy that next uh, that car and you'll find you'll have much cheaper prices. Now budgets might get a little bit tighter because around 6 million US renters owe nearly $20 billion in back rent, according to a recent study co-authored at UC Berkeley. Most are low income earners, women and families with children and people of color, also that happen to be the groups worst affected economically by the pandemic. How much will this affect the evenness of the economic recovery? It's without a question that the, the people at the low end of the income distribution have been most affected and is tragically most affected, not only in terms of the number of deaths 
due to COVID, uh, but also they are the least to be vac the, the, the least likely to be vaccinated. Uh, and and but I think a lot of the programs that have been put in place, especially in California, uh, uh, have been help directed toward helping people pay rent. Um, and so I think the a lot of the the, the government programs uh, have been pushing money into exactly those people who are hurt most and are trying to help them with uh, rent abatement, abatements and also uh, um, uh, moratoriums on, on mortgages as well. So we see a lot of programs to help the poor get over this rough time and until they are able to get back to work again, and that's going to be very soon. All right. Well, thank you as always. William Levy, Chief Economist at the Milken Institute.